Welcome to The Rock. We hope what you watch today inspires you. And we'd love to hear your questions and comments via Twitter at The Rock of York. You can also find us on Facebook or contact us through the website at www.rockofyork.co.uk. In the meantime, let's crack on. Um, also, for those of you who uh, have been following our little pilgrimage journey in respect to uh, Salt Lake City, um, uh, I got a response from one of the guys we met at a place called um, um, Gen Genesis Project in Ogden, uh, Matt Roberts. And so uh, I'm heading out there next month to uh, spend a little time with Matt and see what they're up to. And uh, I think it's the doorway for us into all that we're doing. So uh, it's happening bit by bit. So we appreciate your prayers, and, uh, and uh, we'll keep you informed on what's going on. All right, tonight, um, I want to read you a little portion from the Bible, from the Old Testament. Some great stories in there, uh, really. There are a lot of you that don't bother reading the Bible, and you need to bother, and you say, well, I don't think I can understand it, but when I watch the rubbish you watch on TV, you can understand the Bible if you can understand that, Okay. If you're into Kardashians, there's some good stuff in the Bible, all right. Uh, anyhow, um, this, this story is, is a way old ancient story, it's brilliant, full of life, and it's about a guy called Jacob who, who generationally was important in the process of Bible, for those of you not familiar with Bible. And um, he'd got some issues with his brother because he did some stuff against his brother that was coming back to haunt him like it tends to do when we do stuff in life. And, uh, and this story picks up kind of a few verses from, from the incident where he's about to have to face up to his brother and all the stuff that's gone on. So this is what it says. That night Jacob got up and took his two wives. <clears throat> Don't do that now, do we? Um, his two maidservants and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of Jabbok. After he'd sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. And when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go, for it's daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he replied. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. And Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Which being interpreted is stupid question, because you already know. Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called that place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. And the sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. All right, so I laid awake in the middle of the night wrestling. I don't mean wrestling, Chris, <laughs> but wrestling. You know when stuff is just there, and sometimes you don't even know what the stuff is or where some of the stuff came from, but there's this stuff, and you're wrestling with stuff. Sometimes it happens because of an incident that's occurred during the day. Sometimes it happens because of financial worries or relationship worries, all kinds of stuff, but you're wrestling. And as much as you'd like to stop it, somehow the wrestle goes on. And so I'm wrestling in the night, last night, crying out to God, when I suddenly realize what lies within the word wrestle. It's embedded there like, like the sword in the stone in the legend of King Arthur. Do you remember that legend of King Arthur where Merlin puts the sword in the stone so that only the one who's blessed, only the one who's got a future, only the one who's the true king, who's going to have authority, will be able to remove the sword from the stone. Well, 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 this thing that lies in the word wrestle is embedded there, like that sword in the stone in the legend of King Arthur. And just like in that legend, it won't come out with struggle. You can't get this thing released by struggling, no matter how great you struggle. 
And so the issue is that when you begin to remove letters from the word wrestle, it's interesting that embedded within it, you find something very significant, he said, which is the word rest. Those two things seem to be diametrically opposed in total conflict to each other, and yet the thing embedded within the word wrestle is the word rest. And in wrestle, we are wanting to rest, but we don't realize that the rest actually lies within the wrestle. Let me say a few things, and again, for time's sake, I'll do a lot of soundbite stuff tonight, okay? So hopefully you'll remember the sound bites, but we won't over explain. Struggling and wrestling are two different things. We often confuse struggling with wrestling. Let me explain what I mean. Struggling is when you are desperately trying to get away from someone or something. You put up a struggle, but you're struggling to get away. Wrestling is when you positively engage with the objective of overcoming. So in struggling, you're trying to get away. In wrestling, you're seeking to engage. Struggling and wrestling are two different things, and we can confuse them. Worrying is not wrestling. So when we talk about wrestling, worrying is not wrestling. Worrying is strife. Strife is vigorous or bitter conflict, discord or antagonism. When strife happens, we worry. When stuff's not going how we thought it should go, we worry. But Jesus spoke some very interesting words about worry. He said, you can't worry yourself bigger. You can't worry yourself better. He put it this way. He said, what man by worrying, can add a single inch or centimeter or meter to his height. What man can change what he looks like by worrying? What man can grow more and become more fruitful by worrying? But we somehow are so attached to worrying that we think our worrying will produce a benefit, which is why Jesus said, don't worry. Now, that's easier said than done, because we do tend to worry, but he said, don't worry, because worrying is not going to produce any fruit, any growth, any betterment. It's only going to cause you to decrease and suffer, because worrying leads us to struggle. And struggle is not wrestle. Worry is the wrong strategy to resolve the wrestle. But when you're wrestling with stuff, we tend to think worry is a good strategy to resolve the wrestle. How many of you know it never resolves it? Okay? It just puts it under the surface. So it caused me to ask the question, is there any true rest without wrestle? Is it possible to find extensive and and complete rest in the human spirit, in the human heart, without wrestle. Because rest lies within wrestle. And so, is it a true, is it a true knowledge of what the wrestle is about? Is that critical to resolving the wrestle into rest? So do we need a true knowledge of what the wrestle is about? if we are going to resolve the wrestle into rest. That means a willingness to face what is it that's actually causing this, because worry is just a sidetrack. Struggle is a sidetrack. What is really at the root of this? And so this story of Jacob that we read, what's interesting is, in this prophetic flow that we are experiencing so much at the moment, it's fascinating what is happening, because um, I didn't particularly think I'd like to talk about this story of Jacob. But 
As I was up in the middle of the night with this wrestle, I felt I need to talk about this story of Jacob now. So here's what happened. I am doing some stuff in the night preparing for this and uh, working this morning on it. Lunchtime comes and uh, I sit down and watch the TV a little bit while I'm eating my lunch, which is a little bit of microwave Chinese, which is really nice, just in case you want some details, just... So I'm enjoying my Chinese and my glass of wine, and uh, I flip the TV on, and uh, I'm not a big fan, if you hadn't figured it out, of Christian TV, okay? I'm just not. But I flipped on Christian TV, and uh, I am a less, less a fan of, of Christian dramas. It's like, leave it alone, Leave it to the real professionals. Get on with what we do best, but don't. Don't make movies and films. Don't, just don't. But in all my angst about all that, I flipped it on, and lo and behold, there is a, there is a, there is a, a show on there on Christian TV, and at the point I flip it on, it's Jacob and his two wives and his children about to leave his uncle Laban's house, which is what happens in the previous chapter to this, and going out to meet his brother Esau, which is the surrounding story to this. And as I flip it on, there's this actor acting out Jacob doing this very thing that we just read, going over the brook and being alone and wrestling in the night with this man and his name being changed and his hip being put out of joint. And I'm thinking, maybe this is a sign. So I know it's important. Summary of what we read. We wrestle with our past... We wrestle with ourself, and we wrestle with God. All of us. All of us. When I say our past, it's all the stuff that happens in our life that really, just like Jacob meeting Esau, we, we're having to face, but we don't like the idea of facing the stuff that occurs that is connected to our life and our past. And we wrestle with ourselves because we look at our own value and worth and capability and, and, and failures and all that stuff. And we wrestle with it. Just like me booking a hotel for the wrong night and losing an earring aid on the same day. And then dropping the phone 24 hours later and cracking the glass. I mean, that, that to me is like, you know, I was wrestling. We wrestle with our past. We wrestle with ourself. We wrestle with God. And in that wrestle that we face, there is always a what, a something, and there's always a who, a somebody. Now, I will guarantee you that the who in the wrestling is not the who that you think it is. Because the who in the wrestling is always either you or God. It's not Jenny or Elsie or Bob or Pete. It's you where the battle is. And it's God, our image of God. Where we think God suddenly went to, what we think God might like to do or want to do, those are the things that we wrestle with. And there are times when you have to wrestle if you want to rest. If you're looking for rest, but you're not going to find rest unless you're willing to wrestle. But you have to wrestle with and not strive against. So what we tend to do in life, we don't like the feeling, so we strive against the feeling. And of course, how that tends to manifest is that, that we, we um, what the psychologists call, that has come actually from historic writing in the Bible, we scapegoat, okay? Somebody else's fault, and if we can put all this onto them and send them away, we won't feel this way anymore. It's called scapegoating. And what it means is we never deal with the issues because... The issues you're dealing with, you can't put on someone else because they're on you, okay? You've got to deal with them on you and in you. And that was the issue with Jacob. Jacob's problem was never his brother. Even though stuff had happened with his brother, Jacob's problem was himself and God. And if he could fix that, 
the brother problem would no longer be a problem. There's a verse in, in the New Testament, book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 12, that says, We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers, darkness, on it goes. The point being made there is that our fight is not externally with people and stuff. Principalities, just as readily I've talked about this before, means first things, principle, first things. We wrestle against what is first in our life. Against powers, that literal Greek there means as much the power of choice. We struggle to make choices because we didn't resolve what should be first in our life. And then against the rulers, the things that rule. So we wrestle against the things that are ruling and controlling our life because we wouldn't make choices about the things that have become first. Because when we get the right, thing, right things first, by the choice that we made, because we've decided we want to rule other than the situation, what Jesus said happens when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, stuff gets added to you, not taken away from you. I believe this story helps us to understand this, this and these principles. Now, the surrounding story is one of attempts to appease Jacob's brother, the thing that we read, okay? His brother really represents the aspects of Jacob's life that were threatening and unresolved. So we're all in situations where we have to meet our brother. But this is just a story to show you a principle, okay? You don't have an Esau necessarily. Some of you may have a physical brother that is a situation, but that's not really the point. The point is... The aspects of our life that represent threatening and unresolved things. That's why we wrestle. We feel threatened. I won't have enough. I won't be enough. It's not going to work. I won't survive. All these things that are threatening us when we're wrestling. And also the issue of the unresolved. The stuff in our lives that's not resolved. We haven't resolved who we are. We haven't resolved who God really is. We haven't resolved what we think. We haven't resolved what we believe. We haven't resolved how we're going to live and what we're going to do. We haven't resolved how we're going to respond to life and to people. So unresolved things and threatening things become the brother that every one of us faces when we're having those moments where we are wrestling, that's what's going on. That's why I said you have to resolve what's at the bottom of the wrestling. That's what's at the root of it. So Jacob needed God at this moment. I am an absolute believer that there are some moments, critically, when we need God. I think we need Him all the time, but we need God in our lives. I'm kind of an atheist who believes in God, because I don't believe in the God of the nonsense that some people have talked about God, because they're more interested in replicating Him with Greek and Roman gods than they are with the Abba, the Father of Jesus. I'm not interested in that God, and will speak against that system. But the God of Jesus, the Abba of Jesus, we need him. You need him. And Jacob needed God at this moment. Now, he'd, he'd acquired in his life lots of stuff. He'd actually been quite successful since, since leaving where he lived with his brother and cheating his brother out of his inheritance. Jacob had in many ways outwardly done all right for himself, as the saying goes. The issue is, though, that he needed God at this moment, not cattle, not sheep, not a university degree, not good political and negotiating skills, not good management ability. He needed God. And I need you to know, you can't figure your way out of most of the real issues of life, right? 
You can figure your way out some of the stuff that not real issues, but the real issues, when it gets down to the inner you and the stuff we wrestle over in the night, you can't figure that out. That's where God comes in in the story. But something is important here. He needed a God compassionate towards his needs, yet helpful toward his condition. See, we often like to think it would be good to have a God, who I believe is like it, who's compassionate to our needs, but we also need one who's helpful to our condition. Because it was he who needed changing, not it. It wasn't an it that needed changing, it was he that needed changing. What's fascinating is, this guy wrestling with him, I believe, was God, he was a manifestation of God, he turns up from nowhere into nowhere and picks a fight. You don't realize sometimes when you're wrestling, God picked a fight with you. Not to hurt you, but to help you. Not to damage you, but to release you. And he's picked the fight to wrestle. It's not a fight to the death in one sense, but in the other sense, it is a fight to the death, but not in the way that you would understand it. So God picks a fight with him. Because something needed changing. What's fascinating is this. God says, your name is Jacob, which means, depends how you look at it, cheat, deceiver, But now your name will be Israel. That's where the whole story of Israel starts to come. It all goes a bit awry and gets, you know, some truth needs to be spoken about what happened to that story. But this is where the story started. I'm changing your name from Jacob, cheat, right? He knew he was, to Israel. Now, Israel means prince with God. Remember the sword in the stone, that within that word wrestle, what lies within that word? That within that word, there is embedded like the sword in the stone, in the legend, it's embedded like the sword in the stone. And the thing is, only the prince, Arthur, could release the stone. It came out of the stone not because he struggled, but because of who he realized that he was, and when he understood who he was, he was able to remove the sword from the stone because only a prince could do it. Isn't it fascinating that the rest could come out of the wrestle because now Jacob the cheat, wrestling with himself with God's help, had become a prince, and now he could remove the sword from the stone, the rest from the wrestle. But you first have to be a prince. You first have to have your name changed. So it wasn't about the situation resolving, it was about the change that took place in Jacob's life when he was willing to engage with the process of wrestling with himself and with God. That's when it changed. So... It was he and not it that needed changing. This is one battle you face alone. It says when everybody had gone and he was left alone when it started. This is one battle you face alone. It's one for the darkness of night. It's one you can't buy yourself out of. You must wrestle through it. Your achievements and possessions are worth little or nothing when it comes to the internal issues of the journey through life. And a word for all of you looking for your destiny and purpose in life. I don't care if you've got degrees and doctorates coming out of your ears and every other orifice. I don't care if you're the most skilled artist or the most capable communicator. Your achievements and possessions are worth little or nothing when it comes to the internal issues of the journey through life when you're in the middle of the night and you're on your own and you start to wrestle. They count for nothing. All that counts is your honesty and God. If you can get those two things together, you're coming out of the wrestle at rest. And that's why many of us don't come out of the wrestle at rest. 
He also says he wrestled until daybreak. That means he wrestled all night. Here's the point. If you stop wrestling too soon, you may leave without purpose. If you, because of the wrestle and the, and, and the activity involved in wrestling with these issues, pull out too soon, you will leave without purpose, only to be in another night, and God picking another fight, because he's desperate in his kindness to help you wrestle through that issue, so you can find yourself as a prince, and God is the one who's brought you through to a place of rest. So it's not about defeating, it's about letting go. See, the story says, the guy says, let me go. And, and Jacob says, I will not let you go unless you bless me. He's going to have to let him go. But the story's not about who defeats who, it's about a willingness to let go. In all of our situations, the question is not about defeating the things that happen in life, it's about a willingness to let them go. When you let them go, funnily enough, the anxiety and the stress and the pain and all that stuff that was upon you because you're trying to defeat it rather than let it go, all that stuff tends to disappear. And so he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. It's about the moment of recognition that God picked a fight with you and did it to bring you to a place of rest. And if you're willing, that is, to wrestle and receive, you find that place of rest. It's about letting go, being inseparably attached to the need and desire for blessing beyond your own capabilities. See, it's time we got inseparably attached to our need for blessing. I need a blessing from God. I've spent too long in life to think that I can make it without something beyond myself. I am inseparably attached to my need and desire for a blessing beyond my own capabilities. And that's what God was trying to attach Jacob to. Not for more stuff, but for more grace. The answer's not more stuff, the answer is more grace. And when you come to the place of grace, that's when you find a place of rest. And so what happened was, this figure, this God who he met, touched his hip and put his hip out of joint. And so when all this was over, Abraham, uh, uh, Jacob walked with the limp. Right, so what was all that about? It's all about the fact that not only has your name changed when you resolve this, not only does who you are become something very different and that becomes very princely, but how you walk changes as well. And what people see of your walk changes as well. See, the person that has wrestled through some things with themselves and God and come to a place of rest, they're the ones who've pulled the sword from the stone. They're the ones being equipped to reign in life. They're the ones who wrestled to rest. And they're the ones who tend to walk with the limp. Now, obviously, I don't mean literally, you know, hey, I'm, you know, but you know in that person's life, from the story of their life, that they walk with a limp. There is an imperfection to their own abilities that is evident to everybody. That's not a mark of shame, that's the mark of grace. That's the mark that that person wrestled with the real issues, with reality, with themselves, and with God, and have come out with a limp. If somebody hasn't got a limp in their character, their personality, their presentation, don't follow them because they haven't wrestled with God to the point of blessing where they can take the sword from the stone and have come to a place of rest in the midst of chaos because they went through the wrestle. If you find a perfect pastor... Do two things. Number one, tell me who you think he is. And number two, don't follow him. But if you've found somebody with a limp, they've been in the middle of the night alone wrestling with the God man. And some things have changed within them about who they thought they were and who now God says that they are. 
And out of that, they're walking knowing that it's not the adversities of facing the brother, the difficulties, the challenge, but it's the issue. They've resolved it with God and there is a solution outside of the situation that is available to every man, woman, boy and girl because God wants to do the same thing. So, let me make some quick statements to finish. I believe one of the things we've realized and it's one of the changes that we're trying to bring is um, some of you are not comfortable with, with the wide open spaces of, of discovery. So we, we've been a little reluctant to impose upon you what you should think rather than teaching you how you should think. That's, that's my process of theology, not to tell you what to think, but to try and teach you how to think so that in that process, you come to this life for yourself, free of control and manipulation, but by revelation, because you met God yourself and you understand. But I've also realized, and, and the leadership have, that, that some of you uh, can't figure all that out as easily as others. And sometimes you need to know, and Chris, Jenny, Joel, what is it that you believe? Well, this is what I believe, okay? You can choose to believe this if you wish. I believe this. I believe that in the midst of every wrestle, there is a rest. Every wrestle. Everyone. Some of you have been through the most obnoxious circumstances in life frighteningly horrible, but to you also, in the midst of every wrestle, there is a rest. There is a peace that passes understanding. Why? Because you don't find it in the resolution of circumstance through circumstance. You find it in the resolution of the wrestle of your own heart because you meet God in the midst of it and you get changed. That's who I was. Jacob, but this is who I am, Israel. That's who I was, liar and cheat. This is who I am, prince and princess. Here's the second thing I believe from this story, that God may not always be instantly recognizable, but he is involved. Jacob wasn't quite sure who this dude was who jumped him in the middle of the night. It's like, what the flip? Of course, that's not in the Bible because you wouldn't write that. But I can guarantee you he didn't just think, oh, here's somebody to wrestle with, right? What the flip, why is, what's, well, that's a reality in my life. I don't know about your life. And we don't always instantly recognize that it's the God man, but he is involved, and the more you get involved with the wrestle, the more you will understand that this one who has involved himself with you is actually the solution to your problem, not the compounder of your problem. An openness to God's involvement, but realizing we think, oh, God would come along and say, Jacob, bless you, my child. Wouldn't have worked. He'd have said, thank you, because I am pretty blessable, aren't I? After all, look at the flocks, the herds, the wives, the children. See, it doesn't always help that. That doesn't resolve it. When we are caused to wrestle with the real issues of our life, that's when real value takes place. So God is not one just to come around and bless you, bless you. He says, all right, let's have a wrestle. But why? I don't have to wrestle. No, it's going to help you. So Jacob got involved and he said, I'm not going to let you go, right? I'm not going to let you go until you bless me and unless you bless me because whatever it is that's in the way, I'm doing this till I'm blessed, okay? Now that, that's why I say we get out too soon. In the wrestle, we have to say, I'm not getting out of this until I know that I'm blessed. And when I know that I'm blessed, empowered, touched, then I'll stop the wrestle, but I'm staying with it until I know that I'm blessed. There does come an end to it. That's why in the Bible, the dawn coming is always a wonderful thing, because it means that what you are going through comes to an end. The dawn will always come. The sun will rise on a new day. How many of you know the sun never rises on an old day? Oh, well, the sun came up 
yesterday morning. And even though the sun always comes up on a new day. And if we would learn that the sun only ever rises on a new day, because it's set on an old day, and God's screaming at us in the wrestle saying, listen, I know what happened in that day. I know what went on, but you need to understand, just like the sun goes down and there is darkness and the wrestling happens in the darkness, the sun comes upon a new day. The promise of the kingdom of God is a new day for every man, boy, woman, and girl who will receive in the wrestle the blessing that comes from the one who is wrestling with you. I implore you tonight, receive the blessing. Okay, just four more things that I believe. That fleeing rather than finishing leaves you unchanged but not unmarked. So when you run away, rather than finishing the wrestle, it leaves you unchanged but not unmarked because you tend to have the bruises and the scars of all that you were wrestling with, but nothing changed. Far better to stay with the wrestle until something changes because then the mark that is on you will not be the scars of a battle. It will be the touch of a blessing. It will be the testimony. Is three, two, one, that every wrestle holds the promise of a new and renewed you. I believe that. That you let go, not because you are weak, but because you are blessed. Okay? I'm going to say, oh, let, let go of everything because you're weak. But you can let go of it when you're blessed because the blessing supersedes all the stuff that we need to let go of. And here's the last one. I believe that you will always walk away with a limp when you've engaged in this wrestle with God. There'll always be something about who you are now and how you walk that says to everybody, I wrestle with God and with man and I overcame and I am here now out of that adversity as a blessed man, a blessed woman, a blessed boy, and a blessed girl. Now let me finish it with this. Out of this experience, Jacob then meets his brother Esau, who he cheated out of his father's birthright as the firstborn son. He was a bit of a creep and a sneak. And his brother had every right to take revenge upon Jacob. But the story is showing us the change that occurs. As Jacob changed, what happens? He meets his brother the next day. It says his brother put his arms around his neck and hugged him and kissed him. All the angst and the anxiety was gone because something had changed. Now you can say, well, it's because his brother was different. I don't think his brother was different without the wrestle that Jacob had in the night. But once Jacob had resolved Jacob and once Jacob had resolved God, brother got resolved, okay? It's a lesson. Your circumstance will be resolved when the wrestle with you and God is engaged and when you take it all the way through to the place of rest. When for you, the sword comes out of the stone and you say, hey, I'm not a cheat anymore. I'm a prince. I'm a princess. Rest lies within the wrestle. So wrestle away. But wrestle away to the point where you say, I have a blessing that is beginning in my life that is going to revolutionize my very existence. I will be born again. I will be renewed. My situation will have changed to me because I have changed to me. And above it all to realize that this is not about you bettering yourself. It's not about self-help. It's about realizing there is a God, and this God who was the father of Jesus, who came to be the father, is picking a fight with us so that in the wrestle, we'll come to the kind of rest that we only ever dreamed about, and so that in that rest, the sun rises for us on a new day. Let's pray. You in the very beginning, God, set up creation in a way that we would always have a sunrise, that the sun would always come up. And that our life's pattern is not meant to go from morning to evening, it's meant to go from evening to morning. It's meant to come out of the darkness into the glorious light. And, and I know today, Father, that 
Um, there are many wrestles in here and there are many Esau's of brothers that we have to meet and encounter. But I also know that you're the same one picking the fight with us to wrestle us through to a change in our own lives. That if we will let go of our own agenda, of our own ideas and our own ideals of ourself and you, and we will allow you to be the one you came to be as the redeemer of our life, that radical and dynamic change happens to us. I release that in this place tonight. I release it over every life. I release it into every heart. And pray that the dawn is coming real quick. But most of all, thank you that your intent towards us is always to bless and not to curse. That you come to release us from the horrors of the struggle into the fulfillment of the wrestle so that we find a rest that releases the most incredible blessing from heaven upon our lives. We thank you for your blessing. Let it flow in abundance and lives be touched. And our testimony be, look, I have a limp because I'm blessed of God. We ask all this in your name, by your spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're done. We love you. Bless you. Look forward to seeing you again next week. Have fun. Thanks for watching. You can find out more about all The Rock is doing locally and internationally at www.rockofyork.co.uk. Then why not support The Rock from wherever you are? Just hit the donate button now to help us help others.